This LOS is Calculate and Interpret Beta. Calculation and Interpretation of Beta. Here is an example. In this example, we're going to calculate the beta of GE stock and it's versus the market, which is the S&P 500. The time period is from December 2003 to December 2004. Now this is the exact example from the textbook CFA Level 1 a few years ago. It's no longer in the textbook, but I still like to use it. In fact, when I was studying the CFA Level 1 in 2001, they had the same chart, but it was calculating the beta of Coca-Cola versus the S&P 500. And I think it's quite helpful because we use this in previous LOSs with regards to how to calculate the variance, standard deviation, covariance, correlation, everything. It's a nice little example. And then finally, we use it uh, to calculate the beta. And just jumping straight to the, um, to the end game, we, can, we know that the beta is the covariance between the stock and the market divided by the variance of the market. That's where we're headed to, okay? So in this, just a quick little review of this example, what were we doing? We had the closing prices of GE for each month. So we could, we could calculate the rate of return. Once we've got the rate of return, we have the average rate of return. And by the way, there was no dividends paid during this time. Then we do return minus average return. We square it. We add up that column. And so we have the variance, which is the sum of X minus X bar squared divided by N minus one because it's a sample. And we get the variance for GE. We take the square root of the variance um, and that's going to give us our standard deviation, okay? 3.97. Also, we have the closing prices for the S&P 500 for that time period. And similarly, we can calculate the return and then the average return, okay? And then we do Y minus Y bar, Y minus Y bar squared. The sum of Y minus Y bar squared divided by N minus 1 is the variance. Square root of the variance is the standard deviation. And then in this column, we calculating the covariance, which you may recall is the sum of X minus X bar times Y minus Y bar divided by N minus one, okay? Which is right here. And so as I said then, to calculate the, uh, to calculate the beta then, it's the covariance, the 3.9, divided by the variance of the market, which is 4.38. So if you work that out on your calculator, 3.9 divided by 4.38, that's gonna give you a beta for that time period of 0.89. Which brings up an interesting and important fact is that betas can change over time because this was specific to this time period. So I just opened my Excel file very quickly. So again, you can see that the, uh, so we can use the audit toolbar. The beta is the covariance between the stock, GE, and the market, the S&P 500, divided by the variance of the market, okay? Now, covariance, remember, we can rewrite it as correlation times standard deviation X times standard deviation Y. So down here, I've got the beta as covariance over variance, but we can rewrite the algebra, and the beta is also equal to the correlation times the standard deviation of X, which in this case is GE, divided by the standard deviation of Y, which is the market. So on the previous slide, we saw that we could calculate the beta by calculating the covariance between the stock and the market divided by the variance of the market. In the CFA level one text, they also show that you can calculate the beta, which is the by running a regression between the security return on the y-axis and the market return. So we're running a regression on the returns, the security versus the market. And when you run a regression, you get an equation, y equals a plus bx. So beta is the slope of the line, okay? Y is dependent on x, so the return to the security is dependent on the return of the market. That's why we call this a sing, uh, single factor model. Uh, the market model is a single factor model, and the factor, the sensitivity, is the beta. And the security return is dependent on the return of the market. So carrying along now, I'm just going to run a regression between the returns of GE versus the returns of the S&P 500. And that's why I like working in Excel sometimes with these examples. You really start to get a, a good feel for it. So on this Excel sheet, what I've done is I've just cut out 
again to remind you the dates. It was from December 2003 to December 2004. We had the closing price on GE stock. So we could calculate the return, ending price minus beginning price divided by the beginning price, okay? And there was no dividends paid during that time. And then we also had the closing price or the level of the S&P 500 index. So again, we could calculate the rate of return. So over here on the right-hand side, as I said, GE, is that's the Y axis. Y is dependent on X. So I've just put here the returns for the S&P 500 and the S&P, uh, sorry, the return data for the GE. And also I could do a quick scatter plot here on the right-hand side using that data because that's what we're gonna run the regression on. So I have my data analysis. I'm just gonna click on data analysis and Excel functionality. I'm gonna click on regression. For my Y range, I'm gonna choose the GE. And for my X range, I'm gonna choose the S&P 500 and I'm just gonna click OK, and there we go. Uh, you will recall that our, uh, I'm just gonna highlight that in um, green color, that when we calculated the covariance divided of the stock in the market, GE and the market, divided by the variance of the market, we had the beta of 0 0.89. Now that we've seen how to calculate the beta by running a regression between the returns, of a security and its index. We're gonna go back to the algebra briefly. And again, just uh, work on the calculation interpre the interpretation of the beta a little bit more. So recall, using the algebra, the formula to calculate a beta is to divide the covariance of the asset and the market by the variance of the market. We've done that, okay? But recall that we can restate covariance as the correlation coefficient multiplied by the standard deviations. So here I'm rewriting the covariance as the correlation coefficient times by the standard deviations. Also, in the denominator, we could rewrite the, the variance of the market as the standard deviation times the standard deviation. So we can rewrite the beta formula in a longer hand, where in the numerator we've got the correlation between x and y times the standard deviation of x times the standard deviation of y. And you can see what's gonna happen here these two terms are gonna be able to cancel out. So as I mentioned just on the previous slide, we can simplify the algebra by crossing out one variance of the market in the numerator against one variance of the market in the denominator, okay? So now we have the beta equals the correlation between x and y times the standard deviation of x divided by the standard deviation of y. But the way that we more commonly see that formula written when we see it in the textbook is just slightly arranged. We see the beta equals the correlation times the standard deviation of X divided by the standard deviation of Y. Now this is important because CFA uh, level one, uh, very typical question. You can see here we have one, two, three, four variables. Given three variables, calculate the fourth. So a quick little review here, the steps to calculate a beta. Number one, calculate the average return for the index, or it's given to you. Calculate the average return for the stock. Calculate the covariance. Calculate the variance of the market. And the beta equals the covariance divided by the variance. We're just gonna finish this LOS with three quick practice questions to consolidate our understanding. Information for stock A and the market appear below. The standard deviation of stock A's returns is 40%. The standard deviation of the market's return is 20%, and the correlation of stock A with the market is 85%. The beta of stock A is closest to A, 0.43, B, 1.7, or C, 2.35. The correct answer is B. The beta for the stock is 1.7. How do we calculate that? We need to remember the formula. The beta equals the correlation coefficient times the standard deviation of X divided by the standard deviation of Y. So CFA 101, given three variables, calculate the fourth, very straightforward. So the beta equals 0.85, the correlation, times 0.4 divided by 0.2, which is the standard deviation of the stock, divided by the standard deviation of the market, and that gives us 1.7. The second practice question, a stock has a correlation of 0.45 with the market and a standard deviation of returns of 12.35%. If the market has a standard deviation of returns of 8.25%, then the beta of the stock is closest to A, 
0.3, B, 0.67, or C, 1.5? Okay, the correct answer is B, 0.67. So recall the formula for to calculate a beta, correlation times standard deviation of X times standard deviation of Y. So they've given us the three variables. We just had to calculate the uh, fourth. So this is just the same practice again. 0.45 times 0.1235 divided by 0.0825 equals 0.673636. Now on the lower left hand side, don't need to worry about that too much, but I just wanted to show you that uh, we could also write the calculation of the beta as the correlation times the standard deviation of the stock times the standard deviation of the market divided by the variance of the market. So just have a look uh, on the exam for when they're giving you variance and not standard deviation. Uh, it's always going to be given three or four variables, calculate the fourth or the fifth. So this is the last practice question to finish this LOS. And it's a little bit more difficult because we have to do more than one calculation in the 90 seconds. You can see by looking at the answers what's required, you need to calculate not only the correlation coefficient, but also the beta. So let's look at the data that they've given to us. Given the following data, what is the correlation coefficient between the two stocks? and the beta of stock A. Standard deviation of returns, stock A, 10.04%. Standard deviation of returns, stock B, 2.05%. Standard deviation of the market is 3.01%. The covariance between the two stocks is 0 0.00109, and the covariance between the market and stock A is 0 0.02. So the correlation coefficient uh, between the two stocks is A, 0. 6556 and the beta of stock A 2.2. The correlation coefficient between the two stocks 0.5296 and the beta again for B 2.2. Or is it C where the correlation coefficient between the two stocks is 0.5296 and the beta of stock A is 0 0.06. So you can see if you calculated the beta of stock A as being 0 0.06, the answer would have to be uh, C. Uh, likewise, if you calculated the correlation coefficient between the two stocks as 6 point, 0.6556, the only correct answer uh, could be A. Okay, I really like this question to end the LOS uh, because you, speed is a skill, skill gets rewarded. You have to know a couple of formulas and you have to crank them out uh, fairly quickly. So let's start with the correlation coefficient. This is between the two stocks. So the formula for the correlation coefficient is the covariance between the two stocks divided by the standard deviation of one times the standard deviation of the other. So let's just see, we've given the covariance between the two stocks, 0 0.00109. So we have our numerator. And then for our denominator, it's gonna be the standard deviation of returns, 0 0.0205 times 0 0.104. And we get the correlation coefficient of 0 0.5296. So we know A is therefore out. So we do have to do the next calculation. We need to then calculate the beta of stock A. So to calculate the beta of stock A, it's the covariance between stock A and the market, which we have here is 0 0.002. So we have the numerator, but the denominator is the variance of the market. Remember the variance of the market, and they've given us the standard deviation of the market. So recall, uh, standard deviation equals the square root of the variance. Likewise, when they give you the standard deviation, you need to square it. So we need to take that 0 0.301 and square it. So 0 0.002 divided by 0 0.0301 squared is going to give us 2.2. So we know C is now wrong. B is the correct answer. And that is the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.